Hello everybody, thanks for coming back to Yenner's Way. As you see what I have on the table today, we're going to do something quite complex. I'd like to start by just saying that one of the most enjoyable hobby of some grown-ups is making a galleon like this as a model when they are very young or when they are retired. So I made the same kind of things that when I was very young and I like it so much that I like the uh, functionality of just move something and everything else moves and everything that I like it so much that I also carry on to doing similar things that when I become a pastry chef. So that picture I pick up from my shoebox, it shows that what I did, uh, I think in 1980 plus when I was working in the intercontinental district of Germany. So what you see, this guy is with moustache, with a bit more hair and with 20 kilo less weight, it's me. So um, those were the days. I'd like to also say that every boy's birthday cake wish in one stage is a pirate ship, just like my boys asked me to do it last time. And uh, also that someone's favorite movie is favorite because of this ships is in the movie, just like we've seen in the uh, Pirates of Caribbean. I guess the reason of that popularity, this, this fascinating handmade wooden ships that moves without the engine power, just like with the wind and uh, taking people and helping people to go from one side of the globe to the other side of the globe and then helping finding new lands to live and as a result of exchanging, uh, marrying different cultures and even introducing new tastes, new spices among the, between the continents, just like uh, Christoph Colombo did for America and Captain Cook for Australia. These are all beside the point. Let's come back to tutorial, our main thing. So when I was planning this tutorial, uh, which is going to be three-dimensional galleon, as you realize, that I have a couple of things in my mind, a couple of elements that I wish to combine into one model. So number one, I want to have the very decorated part in here, in the back part here, a bit less in the front, a lot of carvings with finishing with the gold touches and a lots of windows that shows the sophistication. And I want to have the, secondly, the wooden part with a lot of lines. It's represented still the rustic part of the, uh, that time, even that combined with the complexity and uh, also plenty of sails. So I could have done that all the sails combined and then wrap into the sticks, but I want to have a more volume. So that's why wind is another effect that I want to have. Uh, so all the sails are filled with the wind and also a lot of string work, even not, not functional, but it still look like functional. I want to have that. Uh, so, and also the wind is pushes the ship slightly on one side, slanting one side, represent a sense of movement. Even that ship doesn't go anywhere. After all, we have to do all those things without compromising the sophistication. And achieving the tutorial is doable by using simple cake shapes and the simple individual cake decorating methods. So the essential parts, as I said, making something simple, 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 combined together tastefully into the complex, sophisticated look. I always do three-dimensional cakes by just drawing a 2D plan on paper like this and then continue with the cake after. So for this time, I add one more step in between this plan and the cake. So this is the in-between step producing a replica of the cake in three dimension. So that plan was not good enough to understand all the measurements. But uh, when I make my research that I just uh, pick up some more knowledge from the internet and I look at some reference pictures and everything, I combine all those individual elements that are what I'm looking for into one model. That was good, just a roughly drawing. But that was not enough to make the cake because all the measurements I cannot pick up from here. So, but that was good enough to make this because uh, by just uh, making a little bit more effort, like because I'm going to do the cake with the styrofoam blocks anyway, by explaining you exactly what to do if you want to do the cake. So uh, doing this, it shows me how big has to be the sails. If it's too big, I cut a little bit uh, smaller. And after that, if this sticks too long, I chop a little bit more. I do all the string work and to match the reality that what is has to be done. And it was quite comfortable to create that simplistic pieces like uh, individual cake parts and the platforms in between everything. So that was all good. 
So I'm quite happy to do this. So after that, that was also because give me all the individual measurements. So that was not good enough. I made another one. So that is actually the, the plan that you will love to have because everything in the millimetrical, maybe not that much, but centimetrical uh, correctness. So let me show you that. So this one, we don't need it anymore. Just take it out and not use it anymore. All right, so that's the plan. As you see that all those components are individually measured, different papers and everything. I'm going to take everything apart now and further explain you on the plan by looking at individual corners and having individual parts, related parts in the hand to make it a lot more understandable. I'm ready now to start with the waves. So I already need uh, my fondant. Uh, just I'm going to use like a light blue, actually just a, a medium tone blue, and I'm going to brush a little bit more darker tones on top of it. So I like to show you so something very simple and very effective the way how to make very quickly waves. So uh, also what I like to mention without uh, passing through, uh, I, I did this mise en place, I did this preparations before, uh, just in case I'm thinking about like maybe I can use some other places which is out of plan, but uh, I use it actually I also did it in the plane, so I put, I put one here, one there, and then one small one, one small one here, and then something smaller size, I use one here, right here, and then also there, another shape like this. When I'm doing this, I always do opposite sides, not, not everything in the same direction, because if you have a symmetrical designs like this, you have to use uh, different different sort of like uh, left and right on the, on the different areas. So uh, what else I did? Uh, I have shown you already this before how I did this uh, uh, lanterns. Uh, I just finished it with the with the lines on it, very simple lines. And uh, I was planning actually to put this large one on both sides here, but didn't have enough space, not enough appearance. So that's why I changed the location. I put in front and then two here and then two small ones on the corners here. So that is pretty much then. Uh, I just have to uh, do maybe just like uh, some touch-ups on the gold uh, gold parts that which I use some royal icing and chocolate. Uh, I have to cover those areas. So let's do the wave now. All right. I print out something like this. I think this gives me some sort of idea that uh, how the wave should be. Uh, I will take some inspiration from this picture. And this one, uh, I didn't use it because I didn't have enough space, so I just left it on the side. That is a fondant. Just a straight blue from the packet. I just take it out from the packaging. Uh, I don't need too much. Just to roll it like this. I want to have a really irregular texture. So basically I'm aiming to cover that uh, waves around the boat. So watch this. Just did one slit. See the texture? Okay, now, this is goes, uh, I will cut in the middle and put on both sides of the board. I have to count on where the wind coming from. So if I put half this side, half on the other side, the wind comes from this direction, as you see that on the sails. So I like to give a little bit of like some deep or deep and high and low wave style here. Just a little bit, okay. 
then I use only my fingers. So, cut this in the middle. Like that. Keep this on the side. So let's work it out at the side of the boat. Give it nice curves on the side here. You can also push down a little bit, get the highs and lows extreme. So once we put some airbrush and some uh, foams, it will be very natural. Okay, now let's do the other side. I'm gonna play a little, little bit longer later on. Don't forget, whatever we did in one side, as wind, the wind goes this way, so that all those, uh, all those waves goes this direction. Nose is very important because the wave is like breaking this part up.
the boat is slicing the water here in this area. Okay. That's good. So uh, what I'd like to do now, I'm going to uh, take this out of the boat. So these two pieces I'm going to remove again and start airbrushing without airbrushing the body of the boat. So I'm going to airbrush a little bit and put it back again. I mix the blue with a little bit of red. First of all, I like to cover that lower areas. I want to have these two, two different tones of blue. Doesn't matter. You'll brush it anyway. Okay, good. Let's do some cleaning there. All right. One belongs to here. Careful, pick up and place it back again, right in the same area. I think it looks quite pretty, interesting. I cannot imagine how nice it will be after the forms are finished. All right, the other side. That's it, a bit of cleaning and I will let it dry because uh, when I apply uh, some royal icing and then I will also try to do something with the uh, titanium oxide. So I will just uh, try a little corner first, uh, but if this uh, is the blue color wet on the surface, the white is not gonna be distinguished. It will mix itself, it's not gonna be good. So I'm gonna wait uh, around an hour and come back to this uh, white forming. Finishing the waves, what I did just now, is quite 
simple. Uh, I left that uh, particular area to show you exactly what to do. Uh, I'm using titanium dioxide, create some shallow waves, just like the very dim and very sort of like a, a foamy. Another uh, thing I use, uh, royal icing, only on the tips that makes it form a little bit more bubbly, a bit more uh, pronounced, okay? So uh, titanium oxide, dioxide is the powder, which we use for white coloring. Just put a little bit here, it's in powder. And then put just a little bit of water, just a little bit. It melts very, very easily. All right. Then use a sharp, small brush. I go first to the very edge of the waves that touching to the, to the boat. but not touching to the wood. Just randomly, just putting some, some touches everywhere. When you drag your brush, you're only doing the, the high parts of the, of the waves, which is just right. Okay, then you take the real icing, small cones, and then just pipe a little bit on that edge. As you see now, it appears to be uh, piped, which is not right, so use your finger to kill that artificial look. You don't need to do much. Okay. That's it. So, it turns up quite natural.